I'd like to introduce today David Watts. He is a award-winning notary and owner at David Watts Notary Public here in Vancouver. David, thank you for joining us today. Thanks very much, Katie. Now, I know you've got a team and you offer real estate uh, or notarization services for real estate transactions, um, financial planning documentation, notarizations, so on and so forth. But uh, we did ask you to come here today and share a little bit of your expertise and knowledge um, as it relates to real estate transactions, some of the hot topics uh, that are being discussed today. Uh, welcome, welcome back. We had you on the podcast probably about five years ago. Um, but thank you for taking the time to come back today. Well, it's my pleasure and uh, always, always happy to talk about real estate. Yeah. So, so yeah. what are some of the hot topics that you're seeing or issues, you know, conversations around real estate and, and your pro processing and interaction with clients in that regard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, currently, I guess there's a few different things in our in our typical transaction, but, but they were, they've been like, like this for a while. But, you know, the past couple of years, we've been used to really fast closings. Uh, everything being, you know, three weeks and rushing through things. Um, you know, now obviously the volumes in the market are down and we have uh, the provincial government's cooling off period. So I think there's just a lot more, people are taking their time a lot more in transactions. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, uh, you know, in the rising interest rate uh, environment, people are also having to, you know, make sure everything's up to date with their financing. And so, you know, when people are going in, they're prepared and know that they've got a, you know, whether it's a fixed rate commitment or, uh, you know, knowing what they can buy. So I think that we're seeing longer, you know, not longer completion periods, but, uh, and hopefully people are doing their homework on the property before, uh, uh, you know, putting in the <laughs> offer. Yeah. Longer subject removal periods for sure, which gives us time yeah. to connect buyers with you as well earlier on. Yes. So if there's any, any pieces to the puzzle that uh, can take a bit longer. I know I just had one. It was two weeks subject removal. I was floored. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, we're seeing a lot of also subject to sales. Uh, and this is something that we, you know, it's sometimes in the market we see it, but it's, we haven't seen for quite a while, but right now there's a lot of subject to sales. Mm -hmm. and so someone's got to sell another property to free up the money to buy this one. And so it's just, everything's kind of taking a little bit longer. You know, we're seeing a few few collapsing sales and uh, uh, but uh, you know when, when you've got prices coming down which we have seen over the last year it's just a there's different considerations uh, if there's a you know small problems uh, you know a lot of times that used to be remedied by places going up in value now places are going down in value that's uh, it's a different conversation whole new set of issues that arise so what can a buyer or a seller that's working with you do to ensure that their transaction does go smoothly? Like what are some key things that you'd recommend? Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a good question. Like I think the, the buyers, um, you know, uh, well, buyers and sellers, I think, you know, making sure that you're working with, you know, competent people, uh, it just kind of goes without saying, but, um, you know, this, this probably isn't the time where you want to, you know, hire your realtor who is your, you know, your, your friend or a family member who's just new to the industry and you want to give them some business. Like it's a hard market right now. And, um, you know, it requires good advice and it requires advocating for you if you get into trouble. And, um, you know, some of the deals are, you know, are, are tough negotiating. So, you know, having a, you know, solid mortgage broker like yourself, who, who, who knows a little bit about the process and, and can uh, see things in advance uh, and having a realtor uh, uh, who, again, is experienced and, you know, can uh, just help guide you through things if, uh, if things are a little shaky through the process. So, and then of course having well, having a notary or a lawyer who uh, who you who is competent as well is pretty. Yeah, helpful. I always try and get my clients in touch with a lawyer or notary um, recommendation as early as possible and have them connect. But like, what is what is an ideal timeline for somebody to connect with you? if they are looking to purchase real estate contract in hand or not, like what is an yeah. ideal timeline? I mean, most of our, most times uh, people will, you know, go shopping with the realtor and having first confirmed how much money they're, they're going to get. Um, a lot of times we don't see contracts uh, and hear from clients until after subjects are removed on a deal. And 
you know, that might be because, you know, you go out and you try offers in five different places and, and you don't get any of them. So we don't really want to start, we can't start files on deals that we don't have a deal yet. Mm -hmm. um so yeah usually usually once subjects are removed that's where we would get involved now having said that we do get calls uh sometimes someone's putting in an offer on something and there's some weird thing on the title search and they don't know what it's about or or someone's non-resident or there's a you know maybe an estate is selling the property so there are some times then that someone you know either a realtor a mortgage broker or or client will reach out to us and say hey we've got this transaction um, this is a unique thing that we're not sure about. To, uh, what should we be worried about, or what what can go wrong here? What do we need to know? Um, and you know, then we can say, all right, well, this is an estate sale. Like, do we have probate? Um, you know, is is who whose name is the title in? Um, you know, that's that's an example of something where you know we can start asking questions on something specific if there's something weird, uh, which there often is in, in deals. Um, but that's where the experience of the mortgage broker, the realtor involved earlier in the yeah. deal, you know, they can flag stuff and say, yeah, you know what, talk to, you got to talk to the notary about this. Uh, I don't know. This is a weird covenant. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, a lot of times, like most deals, uh, you know, once subjects are removed, then you've done the, and ultimately the buyers, they're the ones doing the due diligence. So they've got to read the strategy, right? They've got to be comfortable because- you know, we get the call, um, hey, can you review this and tell me it's okay? And it's like, well, I don't know. Like, what's okay for you? What, it might be okay for me. It's not okay for you. Like, um, you know, I, I don't have any pets, but uh, maybe it's pretty important to you that you can have pets in your property. So, uh, you know, that's we just, I think, you know, we can't take on too much from our clients in terms of the personal stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, you know, we just, Anything weird, we want to have a look at it and, and get ahead of it. But um, there's always something that wiggles out in a file. One, there's always yeah. one thing that sort of requires yeah. extra attention and due diligence. So having the time to do that is key. I mean, the process is generally the same for most transactions. Um, well, I mean, condos are different than detached properties, but they're generally the same. But yeah, I mean, each transaction is its own set of people, its own property. Um, and there are different things that, you know, line up in different ways that we, you know, might cause some extra attention. And, and you know, as long as they're identified in advance, uh, it's no problem. You know, we can, whether we set aside some money for it or, uh, you know, adjust the price or the timing. Um, yeah, we can deal with it. So what are some things that you recommend clients do not do? Things that will definitely sort of <laughs> cause issue throughout this process or... Yeah cause issue to closing, delay closing? Well, I'm really not a fan of subjective holdbacks. Uh, if, if there's something like, you know, this wall, we don't like the paint on it and say, okay, well, the, you know, seller will fix it and the buyer can hold back some money until they're done to their satisfaction. Well, like satis done to someone's satisfaction, so subjective, it's, it's very difficult. And you know, we've seen files uh, recently that have subject to, you know, fixing a bunch of stuff and the bunch of stuff is fixed, but it's not to the buyer's satisfaction. So they go and fix it themselves. Mm -hmm. And so you've got both parties have spent money addressing the same items and it's, it's unclear in the holdback as to, you know, who now who should get the money, right? So holdbacks, uh, I guess those that's... Uh, <laughs> I always think like whatever the deal, like, hey, if you don't like all this stuff, try and build it into the price. Like yeah. if you think you've got $10,000 worth of work to do, don't get the seller to do it. Just hit the price for 10,000 or negotiate whatever the number is. And then you take it as you see it and you know, you do the work. Um, and um, I always think like whatever it is factored into the price and then you're buying, you know, the whole bundle of goods, uh, mm -hmm. warts, warts and all. And it, well, and then you have control over how it gets done and how well it gets done and when it gets Absolutely. done as well. Yeah. Yeah. By who and, and whatever else. But it's, you know, if you have to discount a property a little bit because of work that has to get done, you know, that's fine. And then, you yeah. you know, everybody knows what the deal is. Yeah. So talk to me about non-resident purchases. We know there's a, 
a ban on that right now, but obviously mm -hmm. there's, there's contracts that were in place prior to the ban being in place. Are you hearing a lot about it, getting a lot of inquiries, seeing any issues around it? Yeah, we're seeing, I mean, not a, not a lot, to be honest. We, and, uh, you know, around COVID, uh, there hasn't been a lot of people traveling around that much anyways. Uh, we're kind of, you know, coming out of that now. But um, in my office, we haven't seen a lot of non-residence um, issues. There is the new foreign, um, the federal foreign buyer ban that's in place for two years. And I think we all know about that. It's all, it, it, you know, the regulations on that weren't released until right up into the enforcement period. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that was particularly helpful, but, you know, there are some things like there are exemptions or, uh, or exceptions people can mm -hmm. buy in non-municipal areas, like you can buy in Whistler, you can buy in rural BC or Saskatchewan or whatever. Um, but, you know, the ban is pretty much a ban. Uh, so if someone, you know, from a dollar country wants to buy in downtown Vancouver and they're, they're calling us like, hey, how can we get around this? <laughs> no, you can't get around this. Like, yeah. this is the law and it's, you got to follow the law. Um, there's no, there's no get around. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I think the misconception is that we did have a large number of foreign buyers. And from everyone I've talked to, they're, you know, in their book of business, it's a very, very small amount of inquiries. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times the you know, in the um I mean 10, eight years ago, there were a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, the period of 2014 to 2018, um, <clears throat> certainly around the Vancouver area, like there were a lot of foreign buyers. Mm -hmm. Um coming from all over the place, uh, you know, from, from China, from the Middle East, uh, from the United States, uh, from Ontario, uh, you know, and, and everywhere. Um, we've seen, you know, the prices really rocketed up through that period mm -hmm. uh, up to COVID and then COVID has kind of unsettled everything. Uh, but, you know, we don't have that huge influx right now of, um, of foreign buyers and immigration. So I don't know, maybe that changes. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it would make sense to me that it would, that, you know, a lot of times our foreign buyers are coming with cash and mm -hmm. it's, it's a good time to be a cash buyer in this market. Oh yeah. You know, the higher interest rates. So. Last yeah. thing I wanted to touch on was mortgage and or title fraud. We've seen a few mm. recent headlines about uh, properties being sold from right underneath people living in the properties here in BC. So how does this happen? I mean, I, I understand it, but for, for those listening, um, how do you see it happening and playing out and what can clients yeah. So um, this, there was a couple of CBC stories recently about this. Um, first off, it was mostly in Ontario. Um, in Ontario, I think there were something like 50 cases of this. The mm -hmm. um, story I saw recently, it's said for British Columbia, I think they were talking about there being three. Uh, over the last three or four years. Um, one was successful, a couple were not. Uh, and that's over, you know, how many, trans like millions of transactions. So, you know, the occurrence of this is really low. It's, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't really happen that much. In Ontario, the, their land title system, is a, it's a different system than we have in British Columbia. And it is more susceptible to to items or issues such as this. In British Columbia, we have the Torrens system of land titles uh, that's based on you know, the indefeasible title and, and the, the registry of titles. Um, and when you do a title search and uh, or state of title certificate, you can rely on who the registered owner is of the property. Mm -hmm. And so we have, you know, we have our ins assurance fund to back up um, situations if there is a title fraud like this that happens. Um, so, and, and, you know, and then you've got things even just like having, you know, having an officer required to sign a, a transfer or a mortgage, um, you know, being a lawyer or a notary. Now we don't, that's not the case in Ontario. Um, mm. so there are a lot of kind of different, different processes that make BC safer. Um, now it's not bulletproof though. Um, you know, we have seen situations where, you know, people are getting really good, fake identification or even getting, you know, fake credentials and getting real identification and using that to transfer properties um, or try to. There are a couple of things that can be, that you can do. Uh, like most of these properties that are, 
sort of the target, you know, good properties to do this to. Um, usually there's no mortgage. Uh, often it's a detached house. Um, quite often also it's a, a non-resident owner. And, there, you know, some of those reasons are that nobody just sees it happening. Like mm -hmm. if, um, if it's a strata property, uh, well, there's going to be a process. Someone has to order, you know, a form app and there's the account has to be updated. So it's, it's someone's going to have to look at it. Um, for a mortgage, you know, if, if payments stop being made or you have to deal with the property in some way, um, that, that, you know, have the bank involved, there's just, there's more to it. Uh, but if you have a, you know, detached house, there's not as many variables. And some of these aren't discovered until the property taxes aren't paid. So, you know, a year could go by. And, um, but there are, like I said, there are some things that you can do. Um, in British Columbia, there's sort of, there's sort of three things that, that we look at. Uh, one is title insurance. Um, and most times when you get a mortgage, your lender requires that you get title insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly the buyer, the homeowner can get an owner policy as well. So if some crazy thing like this happens, <laughs> uh, the title insurance might help pay the legal fees um, to help you recover your title uh, or recover compensation uh, or who you know, whatever that looks like. But mm -hmm. there's there's some assistance there. It's not, not perfect, uh, but it's something. Um, another thing that people can do is, uh, you know, register, if you have a property that you don't have a mortgage on, you can get a, a like a line of credit mortgage, get a, a home equity line of credit and register that against the property. So you don't have to draw money on it, but then you've got like a secured line of credit that yeah, if you need to use it or you can use it, that's great. Um, but what it does is it, it encumbers the equity of the property. So a fraudster can't come and mm -hmm. take it. And it's just for them, it's more hassle though with it, another one. Um, and then the, the last thing that, which is a bit more drastic, um, but some people are wanting to do it is you, there is a process in British Columbia where you can remove what's called the indefeasible title from the land title office. And what this does is, is it basically freezes a parcel so that nothing can happen to it. You can't sell it. You can't put a mortgage on it. You can't do anything with it. Um, now, you take that title and you put it in the safety deposit box, don't lose it. Um, it, it it's, it's a bit of a process to restore the title if you've lost one. Um, but this is something that people can do. And we've had some calls about, uh, you know, people getting information about this. Huh. I vote so, for the, yeah, mortgage, it's, the mortgage, the HELOC. <laughs> yeah, mortgages, yeah. Is a, well, it's, it's a yeah. good, well, I mean, the thing is it encumbers your property, but also maybe yeah. you use it for something. And uh, it's the best interest rate you're going to get on something. So if you can, I don't pay down your credit cards or use it for some investment and who knows what, but uh, it is a, it, it is a way to protect yourself. And it's also, you know, if you do, if you get a mortgage, you, it's an easy time to get title insurance at the same time. Yeah. So um, it's a, yeah, it's certainly a good option. Awesome. Anything else that you would like to share with us that you're seeing today or that anyone coming to work with you should know? Um, yeah, not nothing too too crazy. You know, we're <laughs> we're continuing to uh, you know, deals come in, we take care of people. We we are, you know, in our office, we always want to be uh, efficient. We want to provide the best service we can and uh, you know the uh, referral partners who we work with you know they often have the same values so uh, we like working with the clients who come to us and they like working with us and it, it all seems to work pretty well so uh, yeah you know we, there's some we have some enhancements that we're trying to do you know in just providing better service we're trying to do more wire transfers to clients instead of checks and um, you know just be a little bit more dialed in on cyber security and stuff like that we're Mm -hmm. you know, upping our uh, certifications there, not certifications, but we're all taking new courses on, on cyber crime and cyber uh, security and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, our clients information is, uh, you know, we, we respect that that's as sensitive and uh, private. And so we're, uh, you know, taking steps to safeguard that. And, uh, and signing, yeah, just could... signing is still done in person. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. I mean, there's, <laughs> there are some times when it can be done on, um, uh, virtually like via zoom and uh, but we still need to see you sign the wedding it's not all docusign uh there are some things that can be done on docusign mm -hmm. we do have tools that we can use when we're doing that for enhanced identification uh checking there's a, a product called treefort uh that we 
uh, have used. And it's um, it's basically a, a you know you take a picture of your ID and then of yourself and then the mm -hmm. technology matches the two and then combines that with things like can you line it, log in your online bank or what's your cell phone number? Mm -hmm. like it, it does a it does a, a soft credit check at the same time, so it's matching the name on your ID with some other components of you to make sure it kind of triangulates and, and and works. So these are things that are, you know, a little bit better than just us looking at your identification, which, hey, I mean, this has worked for a long time of us doing this and we're pretty good at it. Um, but, you know, it's it's pretty difficult to spot a, you know, a deep fake uh, or real ID that's been s stolen. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there are, there are more tools out there so we continue to investigate them. Awesome. How yeah. does someone reach you if they're looking to work with you other than, of course, through a referral from me? We very much appreciate your referrals and, and we take uh, we take good care of all our referral partners and uh, and uh, clients that you send. Uh, if people want to find us, um, yeah, you can always uh, find us on Google, uh, davidnotary.com or just David Watts Notary Public or Vancouver Notary or any of those things. Our uh, SEO is pretty good, so we're usually up near the top. Uh, so yeah, you can find, just, just search us or, or yeah, phone anytime, email david at davidnotary.com and uh, yeah, you'll find us or just ask, ask your realtor or your broker who you're working with and uh, they can put you in touch. Awesome. Well, thank you again for taking the time to share your uh, expertise. If anyone does want to reach out to David, please feel free to do so. I can also do a personal introduction. Highly recommend him. We've done, I don't know how many files together over the years, but quite a, a few. <laughs> so yeah. thank you again. Sounds great. Thanks very much, Katie. Have a great day.